Praise the Lord, friends. Thomas Mantha the fourth here, coming to you live with another message in the continuation of this series I've gotten into, entitled Prophetic Affirmations. And this will be volume five. And the Lord said to me, the last couple of days I've been so busy, I haven't been able to get to uh, come on here and share this with you yet, but I'm doing it now. I'm going to begin in this. If I continue, we'll see how it flows, uh, how much we get through and to. The Lord said to me, Tell the people it's time to make confessions. It's time to say what you want. First reference, the Bible says a reference, a preference, a preferential referential. <laughs> a preference reference, a great reference from Scripture. The Bible says you can have what you say. John 15, 7 said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, the Lord said, then you'll ask what you will and it'll be done for you. Mark 11, 23 says, you can confess something and have it if you doubt not. And what thing you want when you pray for it in the 24th verse in Mark chapter 11, it says, believe you receive and you shall have. Next witness, God called things that were not yet as though they already were. Imagine, he was speaking them into existence. Blessings all you that are coming on, my dear friends. Blessings on you, I mean it. Listen here, we got to say some things. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me, the Lord said, and another witness, Abraham had the spirit of faith, believing for the thing that he didn't have yet, but he saw a glimpse of it. And by faith, he confessed and by faith he believed and therefore he spoke. And he was looking for that place who's the city whose builder and maker was God. He was looking for that place, you know. That place. That space. That glory. That power. That, you know, might and dominion and realm of rulership. He said, I have to have it, and I'm going to have it. How many of you believe like that? The, you know, the, let, let's remember what the Bible said in uh, um, hmm, Isaiah 45, 2 and 3, that I'll give you riches of hidden places, hidden sources, unknown to you now, or maybe known to you now, but I'll, I'll cause them to come through for you because I have need of them. Remember the donkey in which never a man sat. Jesus said, uh, uh, get it. The, the Lord, and the people said, the Lord has need of it. A new one, a new thing to ride upon. You know, whatever, whatever you need for the work that you have in your life, whatever you need for uh, uh, the kingdom advancement program that God has, he knows about it. I'm speaking, and this is going to be very encouraging to a lot of people. I'm going, to preach my, I'm going to preach myself happy and do three backflips here in my Range Rover right now. Glory. But I can't do that. I mean, in the spirit, not in the natural. In the spirit inside of me and maybe in my imagination, but not in the natural. No. But the Lord is, is, uh, is very, very, very serious about you trusting him and knowing that he's going to come through for you. You have to say it. Now, here's one thing we need to do. We need to break every curse, every word curse, every setback, every affliction that has come uh, uh, to our lives in, you know, from previous situations and, and, and see that God is going to uh, really, really take us to where he's called us to get to. Sometimes you have these things going on in your mind. Wow. Attacks that happen, betrayals that happen, situations that happen, things that were evil that happen, and, and deep-rooted stuff because the devil was so afraid of your power and the calling that he's given you that, you know, they just want to do anything to, to mock it, stop it, subvert it, thwart it, 
kill it, deny it, delay it, derail it. And you need to speak against all those things. <clears throat> I'll tell you, you wouldn't be doing bad if you bought lunch for everybody that would come and pray with you. You wouldn't be doing bad to have like uh, something that would like, you know, tell people, I'll give you a free DVD, I'll give you my book, I'll give you my, whatever you got, you know, I'll tell you whatever you got. I'll buy you lunch, I'll buy you, let's pray, let's pray. I'll have coffee there, I'll have, you know, whatever can, someone can say. It's not that people should need that to get together, but people need to take time to pray. Whatever it is that could be motivating to someone. I'm not saying you uh, you bribe them or buy them, but you know, make them feel like they want to come and do this thing because there's a lot of work in this spirit. Some demons I, I call uh, maintenance problems. There's a lack of maintenance. Some deliverance isn't like always needed all the time to dust things off. There are people that can work to do that work. And this is by speaking, okay? Some deliverance, some devils need to be chased away by people doing their work, by them speaking to these things and telling them and getting under the anointing and telling them to get out and get out and get away and get off. And you crush them down, knock them down, pull them down, tear them down, throw them down, destroy them so that then you could, uh, you know, take the weeds out of the garden so that now you can build and plant the good and the right thing that God wants planted and built. One other way you, you can uh, work this principle is by giving. I'm talking about confessions, but <clears throat> excuse me, there are a lot of things involved in this. Your giving causes harvest to come. Your faith causes the miraculous to flow. Your trust in God causes uh, God to move for you. See this guy here with his little with his little noisy little Camaro or whatever he has next thing he's a big man. See people I, I gotta break this thing, you know, driving around, making noise, going around, funny. <clears throat> funny spirit <clears throat> excuse me you know people sometimes grow up and they have all these issues from their childhood they're not grown people and I gotta tell you something you need to break that nobody needs anything lingering from the past life or the past childhood or any issue that things happen along the way or attacks that came you need to clear out the clutter this is the maintenance work my friend that needs to be done by confession and by staying fresh under the anointing. That you don't go up and down. You know, you have these roller coaster rides. A lot of believers are like that. Preachers even have these problems. Come on now, I'm telling the truth. Have these problems, the waves are like good. They're up one day. Glory, that was great. What a meeting. What a thing. And then, uh, and then the back up. Oh, uh, there got a roller coaster ride. No, if you stay in the presence of God and you stay strong in faith and you stay strong in your confession, you stay in that, you know, every day is going to be a great day. Something good's going to happen. Now, I want to deal with this issue of finances and provision. I want to deal with uh, curses that have been placed uh, against people. I want to deal, I want to break things that have caused limitations for people and people to stay stuck in a certain realm of, of level of, of living or, or uh, operations or whatever, uh, a certain level of productivity, but they haven't break, break it, broken forth into the higher thing that God wants. You can't stay in the place you've been. Cannot. You have to go up. You have to go higher. You must proceed into success. And you got to be talking about it. You got to be talking about it. You have to be talking about it. You must be saying it with your mouth. You must be saying it in faith. You must be saying it <clears throat> about the past, right? Okay, I see something about that. I can't read it too well clearly from uh, my vantage point here. But I saw the word past in a post. I saw that. Can't read the rest of it. But, I, but it just triggers something. Here's the scripture for that. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 and 20. 
Consider not the things of old. Remember not the former things, because I'm going to do a new thing, verse 19. Shall I not now spring forth, verse 20? I'll make waters and rivers of blessing and glory and life to, to flow even in the dry places, even in the wilderness, even in the, de in the desert, where there seemed to be no rain, where there seemed to be no uh, outpouring. There seemed to be no great stuff that was happening on any big level. And you want to just go higher now. You can go there as far as you want to go. So the real victory in life is based on our sphere of being and influence in the now. What we're experiencing in the now, what we're dealing with in the right now. You know, not, you know, how, how we're carrying on in power. You can see a bunch of lazy, belligerent fools all around you and people that are just off, even people in church, just not doing everything they could be doing, you know? I don't mean to say that about a brother or sister in Christ. I'm not trying to belittle anybody, but, you know, some people are just not, they're not switching, the switch isn't on. The elevator's not moving up. They're stuck on the, on the sub-basement level of the floor, and they don't need to be. People in business are like that. People in life are like that. Have, they have a mo and some legitimate, some people have been attacked by the enemy and, and they've been, you know, suppressed and oppressed and all that. But you, as God's own son and God's own daughter, whichever side of the gender equation you were on, and I covered all of them right there because there's only two. Only two. It takes two to tango. It takes two to procreate and there aren't any more. Period. Kabisa. That's a Swahili word for full stop, completion. Done. Forever. Settled. <clears throat> you, you need to, uh, to rise up as the royalty that you are and begin to break forth. Now you need to say it. Say it enough till you start to feel it. Yeah, two. <laughs> Take, amen, Bishop. Two, that's all. Dos. Dos mang. Dos mang. Gloria Dios. Only two. Yeah. You and him. You and God. You and someone else. A prayer partner praying together. Husband and wife praying together. Friends praying together. People praying together. Amen. We need to do it. Because there's a lot of maintenance stuff that needs to be done to clear out all these spider webs. All these messes and mismatches and you know afflictions and what you need to break through in the climate of where you are now are you understanding what i'm saying so i know there's a better place i know there's another season i know that there is uh something great that's about to happen that's even better than you know what you're seeing right now but you have to, uh, oh, help me, God. Okay, I got that. All right, good. You need to break it. What does the scripture say? Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of all of them. A righteous man could fall down, trip in his way, but. <laughs> He'll get up and keep moving. Second Peter one ten. Uh, someone was trying to argue you should call it two Peter instead of second. Whatever, man. Do your own seminar. Who cares? Second two 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 Peter one ten or second Peter, because there's a first book of Peter, so there's a second book of Peter. It's very appropriate. Don't give me that. Splitting hairs over this. How I should call it. 2 Corinthians instead of 2 Corinthians. Say it how you like. I like the second thing because there was a first. It kind of, you know, it kind of, it kind of rolls there. So the Lord <coughs> said there, trying to take a picture of these palm trees. Oh my Jesus. Oh, that's so beautiful. The Lord is, uh, is clear on the fact that he told Peter to say this. Make your calling and election sure for you that do this will never stumble. You'll never lose out. 
you'll never lose the plot. You can't go off course completely. You may have a distraction, a delay, a denial, a deterrence, an attack, a derision, a division, you know, all these D words. Huh? Depression, devastation, despair, disillusionment, discouragement. Come on, I can go right down D, 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 D. But let's, let's come up with some good D words. The good D words. Dominion, dominate, take control, take it by force. The violent take it by force, yes? You know, the scripture did say that. And, uh, whew, wow, here's another car right in front of me. It's just like mine. Do I have to take a picture of that? It's an identical match of my car. And I'm driving right now. Let me take a picture. Someone's going to think it's, someone's going to see this and think it's mine. Oh, i tell you. I'm creative, aren't I? Wow. That's pretty cool. So, um, make your calling an election show. What does that mean? Rehearse in your mind and in your speech the plan A that God gave you. And don't ever back up on it. And whatever God said, recollect the most you can. And here's what you need to do. You need to mark those that cause division among you. Is, mar is that Romans 16, 17, yeah? Is it Romans 16, 17? I believe it is. Mark those that cause division among you and have no company with them. Anybody that's hurt you, damaged you, caused you to feel bad, overlooked you, denied you, derailed you, attacked you, you need to just avoid company with them and also confess and pray that God will deal with them. <clears throat> and if he, if, he, if he feels too, you know, mad at them that he doesn't want to touch them, because, you know, have you ever seen someone that just looks really, just so, it's just so unnerving. I, I, I could say it's a little bit rough. It's a little bit rough for some, some of these mercy Christians, you know. Everything's mercy and, you know, you, you know what? You have a right to believe that. Take all your time doing things that don't produce anything. And after a while, maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe you'll get the revelation that um, you can't fool around with everybody. You know, some people, like, swing at you, I mean, throw the pitch at you, but you can't swing at every pitch that comes. You can't answer every phone call. Some people are just immersed in an eternal problem, and it's always a problem, and it's always the same story. And this, now, 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 this is not every case, but there are people that, you know, are full of issues, and when you start to talk with them and deal with them, I'm going to help somebody right now. I'm going to help a pastor right now. I'm going to help a prophet right now. I'm going to help an evangelist right now. I'm going to help a business person right now. You can't take... Now, there are times you need to minister to someone. You need to be polite to everybody, of course. You need to love them. You need to pray for them. Of course! Not, I'm not changing that at all. That's a given. But you don't have to take all your time because people got all these issues and they're calling you, you know, and then you want it to every time and the devil can just like... Whew, Make you feel, and then you wonder why you're feeling bad. You wonder why you're not getting anything done. You wonder why you got out of the way. This is really a little bit, a uh, little bit, uh, a little bit of a strong mix here. What I'm saying, but it's the truth. Know how to value your time. Don't let people suck the life out of you. They should be giving life back. <clears throat> Just give them a minute and write them a message back and say, please text me, which is true busy, text me, send me, let me read, let me pray. I'm praying for you. Give them a scripture here, but you don't have to be like on the phone. The man of God said uh, this uh, principle years ago, I'm reminded right now, one of my dear mentors, he said, uh, 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 well, they, someone said, well, they kept me on the phone for two hours. And he said, well, who was holding up your end of the phone? You got to have exit time. You got to have an exit clause, say a prayer. Break in, stop praying. That means it's coming to a conclusion, but you want to make the call meaningful with prayer. Take, you know, value your time. And he was also saying that he used to see things in 15-minute segments in an hour. So one hour had a segment, one, two, three, and four. And when he got over into the two and the three, he started saying, hey, wow, I, a segment of time is gone. Another one, another one. How many can I take on this? And you wonder why the man's a multimillionaire. 
just wonder. Go figure. You wonder why he's one of the most successful, most powerful, potent, influential men of God that's ever walked the earth. People in business are like that. They value several things. They value information. They value time. They value... No, I'm, I'm teaching here. And I, I thought I was going to say a few things about confession. But it all comes into this thing about faith, declaration, affirming your life with, with, with speaking things, but also having the aggressive plan of action that you need to have to be moving on to the next level and in the next dimension of life. Stop taking your time this is, the, this is Papa God talking through his prophet here. Stop taking your time, the Lord says, if you needed that. I don't know. I don't think I need to say that all the time. But you can figure it out who's talking here. The anointing is flowing. Stop taking your time, the, the Lord says. Father God says. Jesus says. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. However you like to say it. I think it's all okay too, whichever way works for you. <clears throat> you need to uh, really stop taking your time on things that don't produce what God wants to be productive in your life. Now, you have to ask the Lord, what, Lord, what do you want me to be doing what do you want me to be doing with my time what is it that you want me to be doing right now what is amen Frank that's right the boss is talking when you want to get enough done how on earth are you going to get it done? Ask the Lord through this thing right here. Talk. Pray. Ask the Lord. Say, Lord God, Father God, in Jesus' name, please show me what you want me to be doing. Give me the plan of strategy and action. Keep encouraging me to know that you're working for me behind the scenes, that everything's going to work out because you said it and we're believing for it. Now, here's another blast off point on the Roman confession that I really wanted to talk about when I open this segment up, and I want to get to this right now, very strongly. You need to pray for the bridge to be built between the where things are to where things are going to be in a, in a few minutes, when the Lord is actually going to give you the manifestation of the promise that he gave of you to have healing and health and riches and wealth, healing in your body, beautiful realms of, of high amounts of finance, in, in provision in your in your in your accounts and in your hands, pockets, accounts, and all that uh, real estate that you want to have, properties that you want to have and buy and own uh, uh, or receive as gifts, vehicles you want, houses you want, equipment you want, people you want, the teams you want. All of this is provision for advancing the kingdom. Whatever realm it. You know, however it works. However it works. You need to have it all. And the Lord does want you to have it. I was talking to uh, one of my... Uh, how would I call her? A protege? Maybe not. A daughter in the Lord. She's a great minister of the gospel. Uh, anyway, I claim all those because that's kind of how the, the connection is. The relationship is, but I was, I was, I was talking to her. We're doing some big business is happening, okay, and we're confessing also that this is coming through in Jesus' name. Whatever business you're in, whatever business I'm in, whatever we're doing, the Lord is making it a reality that whoever wants to stand in the way and fight and deny and derail and delay, they're getting popped to be set in place or moved out of the way, but that thing is coming through. That business, that money is coming into my hands, into your hands. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming now in Jesus' name. Remember that old thing, money comes now, money comes to me. Money comes to me now in Jesus' name. It comes to me now in Jesus' name. No more delays. 
whatever is happening, whatever foolishness is going on, whoever is trying to block the way, Lord, send your angels to smite them now. Either correct them, make them work, or if they're in the way, knock them out of the way. Whatever the A to Z is of the whole issue, let it be sorted out now. In Jesus' name. And the money's coming forward to us. In Jesus' name. Whatever the project is that God has us on, I declare it's happening now. This is confession. This is prophetic affirmations in the realm of confession. You need to speak that thing. That what is promised and what's in the works will come through, will happen in Jesus' name in every way possible. And we will be pleasantly even shockingly surprised at how quick it happens and how glorious it is when it arrives and the Lord is on the throne and he's doing it for us because he promised us these things now I'm not just talking about from the word because we've heard it prophetically that God spoke about wealth was he joking? no are we joking about receiving it? no are we joking about wanting it? no so I was talking to this woman that got on the phone. Here's what I said there. I said, uh, open your ears, listen to me. All of the resources that he put in the earth, he has desired and ordained them to be ours. For the working of the king, advancing the kingdom, and for blessing us personally in every way. Corporately, personally, ministry-wise, business-wise, family-wise, all of it, all of it, all of it. I said, it is 1,000. I use that number. I could have used 1 trillion, 1 million, not just 100. 100 is like the completion, but I want to say with emphasis even more than that. It is 1,000. I said 1,000%. I let, we could even add to that. Multiply in one number stuff. It is absolutely, unequivocally the perfect will of God for you and for me, now I know for me, because I can speak for myself, to have, to have wealth, to be wealthy, to be rich, cash in millions, to have properties, to have buildings, to have media, to have teams, to have staff, to have equipment, to have everything, everything desired that we need and want, it's God's will. For me to have it. Now you need, to, you need to say your own confession on that. It's God's will. You can say it. For me to be wealthy. It's God's will. For me to be healthy. It's God's will. For me to have every good thing. That the Lord has made. Upon the earth and in the earth. They are all for me. They are all for me to have possess, use, and enjoy for this life that I'm living here in this earth now and that I can get all of his work done that he wants to be done. And Father God, in Jesus' name, you know what we have need of exactly. You know just where we're at, how much time we have, how much resources we have. How much we have, we just, you, you know exactly what it all is, and you know exactly what is needed. Desired, yes, and needed, yes. Both. And we are going to have them in Jesus' name, I declare it, over your life. No small destiny is yours. No small mission is yours. No small thing is yours. And we need to keep confessing it. Another confession. Here we go. Every curse of things that marred your self-esteem, that messed with your image, that made you feel bad because of regrets, mistakes, attacks, warfare, wrong decisions, wastes, wastings of times, time and times. You know, those things can those things can rattle your brain and just, you know, an enemy wants to keep telling you about it every day. I rebuke the devil in Jesus' name that wants to keep talking to us about bad things. 
You know, someone was saying that negative uh, thoughts can actually damage your life. Stress can damage your health. Negative thinking can actually uh, adversely affect your brain. Well, it's, you know, that kind of is not a far uh, stretch to understand that. So we need to always be thinking positive. Remember the scripture said in Philippians 4, whatever things are true, just, honest, a good report, lovely, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. We need to do that. And we need to have this positive mindset, positive mentality, even in negative situations. And you do that also by what you say. You know, saying continuously causes your heart. Hearing, 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 hearing. Some psychologists said, or people that, scientists, people that study the mind, they said, you believe your own voice usually more than anybody else's voice. You believe your own words more than anyone else. So I think you should just record yourself and listen back to yourself. And some people say, I can't do that. I want to listen to someone else. I don't want to listen to me. Well, why not? You're great. Let's listen to you. So make the adjustment in that realm and just make yourself a recording. Say, I am great. I am blessed. I am rich. Aff affirmations and confessions. Here we go. I am blessed. I am great. I am rich. I am healthy. I am whole. I am wonderfully favored by God. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I'm a king. You ladies could say you're a queen. You other men could say you're a king. Amen. Based on one of the two that you are, male or female. And that's the only two genders that exist anyway in reality. Because those are the ones God made. And he stopped there. He didn't make more. <laughs> so let, let that be a... Uh, let that be said, officially documented. The Lord is helping us to encourage ourselves. Remember David was having a hard time and he encouraged himself in the Lord. And he even said to his soul, see, he, he overcame by speaking to himself. He said, O soul that is within me, why are you disquieted, discomforted? Why are you cast down? Why are you sad and depressed? Hope in God, trust in God. The Lord said, the Lord promised. And you like appropriate that promise by speaking it. And now whew, you feel that. This is great. This is great. And this needs to be addressed. This needs to be taught. This needs to be uh, spoken. This needs to be declared. And I'm doing it. And we need to do that in Jesus' name. And keep saying, keep saying, keep saying. Because... You're going to get it. You're going to, because you, you're creating with your words. When you keep saying, you're actually creating something new that wasn't there before. And God wants us to be continuously doing that. So I am, uh, I'm, I'm thrilled with this. Prophetic Affirmations, Volume 5, Confessions. And I'm, maybe I'll, I'll come in a part two of this. I don't know, or we'll continue in whatever next the Lord is saying. But, God is uh, is serious about you accomplishing his vision. He's serious about the dreams and goals and vision he's given you. He's serious about it being accomplished and performed. We need to trust him. The Lord spoke to me a few weeks ago and he, and he, and he said to me, he said, son, do you trust me? Do you really trust me? I said, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh, God, help me. Remember that once said, help, my, help any unbelief. Not the best thing to say or to acknowledge, but if you've ever felt like, I wonder, I wonder. No, we got to keep on the thing of saying on the wall, God is saying it, saying through the fence, God has said, has said it, it shall come to pass. He's the Lord our God who teaches us <coughs> to profit and leads us in the way we should go. You got to stay with that. Confessions. Affirming yourself, affirming situations prophetically by speaking. You need to keep doing that. All right, now uh, we have a new website. Should be uh, all, all live on all the platforms by tomorrow. It's live now, but if you put in www, make sure you put the www first because we're doing some configurations between different domains and trying to work that out tonight and tomorrow. Uh, tonight, actually. But the new site is live. It's got more information on it. We're going to be keep adding stuff to it. 
We're going to keep enhancing it with colors and design and more info and more things, more pages, more info. But there's some uh, there's some good stuff on there right now. Some testimonies, some photos, uh, a great product offer I have, which I'll tell you about again right now. It's this book that I've written called The Benefits of Excellence and this great message I did in uh, Nigeria uh, and a great conversation on the power to create wealth. This is rich. And this is just on this subject. And this is just on the subject of, of excellence. You need excellence. You need the power from God to create wealth. Something will be transmuted and transmitted and imparted to you through these uh, through this great thing. And as, as a love gift of, uh, of uh, $20 or more, to a, plus the shipping handy, $25 or more, uh, or more, okay, you, for any seed you're sowing beyond that, you can get these, and I'll send them as my gift. I like to say where the scripture says, buy the truth and sell it not. We don't sell books. We don't sell DVDs. We don't. We give them to our partners in appreciation for their love gifts, okay? So sow a generous seed, the most generous seed you can sow, and make sure I get your address, don't make me have to think that I'm going to get it by word of knowledge or, you, or remind myself a hundred times. Please be, you know, upfront with presenting yourself, saying, this is my address. I'm sowing this seed. I'd love to uh, receive that. And we will mail them to you in the U.S. and Canada for any love gift of $25 or more. And that's $20 plus $5 shipping and handling or more. Okay. So if you're sowing a $50 seed, a $100 seed, a $1,000 seed. $500 seed, $300 seed, whatever the Lord is, is telling you to do right now. Uh, sow into this anointing. And you're going to begin to see the power of heaven. Anna Shell in New Jersey. Branda, you could be from where we just were in the conference. Uh, Gad, Chris, all you people on here, Michael, hello, 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 hello. First hand, Lola, uh, Jeroge, Bishop Donald McClintock, my dear beloved friend, covenant friend, Anthony, wow, Diana, hello, Brenda McClintock, prophetess, woman of God, boy, this woman preached and Apostle Donald preached things that were just so, so, so kingdom, so, so church breakthrough for people. Awesome. I mean, out of this world. And we honor them. Brother Frank watching. Blessings on you for all you're doing. I really mean that. Praying for you. Whew. So, the benefits of excellence and the power to create wealth, you, they can be yours. If you're overseas outside of the U U.S. and Canada, outside of the United States, North America, you can uh, send me a desire you'd like to have them, and we'll see how we can get it digitally done uh, to be able to be downloadable online. All of my books and things are going to be coming on, and, and also I'm writing several new books also, and all that will be coming out. So on thomasmanton.com, you can see the Donate Now button, Donate Today, and click that and sow your seed, and I would love to send these to you. Love to send these to you. They'll rock your world and change your life. I'm all about creating successful people, new things that haven't been seen or done before. Those are the things that you need to do. The blessings that you've been waiting for, those are the things that need to happen. And by us confessing and declaring these things, and I declare over you again that God is helping you in all of these great ways and with all of these great things. And to give you the desires of your heart and to give you the desires of his heart, things he's promised and things he's ordained for us to be, for us to do, for us to have. And for us to proceed with the call, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus that he has for us. This is 
the day and the hour for it to come to pass. And there's no uh, darkness or shadow of turning in God, you know. What he promised is what he wants to see happen, is what he wants to do. What he's ordained is what needs to be, period. So I'm praying for you in this. I'm praying for you in this. That there's mysteries to unfold yet untold. And God is going to begin to give you the things. All of the tools. All of the enhancements. All of the abilities. All of the enablements. All of the favor. All of the operations. All the administrations. All of the resources. All of the provisions that you need to accomplish his mission. We are declaring it in Jesus' name. Prophetic affirmations on the subject of confessions, part one. I love you, I'm praying for you, and I'll see you on the next broadcast, in Jesus' name. Write to me, thank you for sowing your seed, and when you do, I'm gonna be glad to get these to you if you're in the United States and Canada. Just make sure I get your address along with your seed, and if you have prayer requests, testimonies, you could write me here on this social media platform. And also you can leave a detailed message if you call this number. A special hotline number direct to me is plus one seven four seven two six three two four eight four. It's really seven four seven two six faith. Seven four seven two six faith. So it's plus one seven four seven like the big jet airplane. You remember that? 747-263-2484. M-Pesa in Kenya. You do it on 0792-320-780 or 0706-164191. Those both get direct to us. And you can do that. Those of you in Kenya, that's the easiest way to sow seed is by M-Pesa. Do that, and I'm going to keep a record of your <clears throat> um, $25 or more. That would be, what, 2,500 shillings? Yeah. If someone's selling 2,500 shillings or more, 2,500 or more shillings, which is about $25 in, in U.S., I'll keep a note of that, and when I have these available, I'm going to make sure you get a copy. If we get them in physical, uh, like I have them in my hand here, there, uh, in Nairobi, Kenya, you can we can get the way of how you can get these, okay? And uh, if by digital platform, I'll make sure that you're able to do that. But you have to remind me, please. I'm a busy man. Please be reminding me. I don't mind people writing me, sending me messages, but... You know, I have a message recording on my 747 number, and I say, to be remembered, you have to do something memorable. So do it. If you don't want to be forgotten, do something unforgettable. Do it. It, it, it puts you in, my, in, in front of my gaze, and I, I'll remember you. I'll also be praying for you. But if I never hear from you and I never see you, how? If you never sow, how are you going to get blessed in, in this way? You need to tap the grace of fire that's on this anointing. And we are doing things all over the world, and you can be a part of that too. I want to pray that God will do things all over the world for you and with you and bless you in the most amazing way starting right here now in this new month, right now in Jesus' name. Get ready for it to be the best few days of your entire life. And the next season, the Lord said to me, it's not just coming. It's already here. And now you need to step up the game and get in, in every way you can to be doing that. Sowing for a harvest. Praying and prophesying and declaring for the thing to come back to you. Being in faith to believe God for every big thing that he has for you. And you're going to see it happen. And this is the Lord's will that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers according to 3 John uh, 2. To four. And the old man John, the apostle, said, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. 
So you walking in truth means you're being blessed. And I want to hear about it. I want to know about it. I want to be a part of that miracle in your life. So tap the grace that's here and let's agree together. Have me be to be praying for you. And um, I will gladly do that. See you on the next broadcast. Prophetic Affirmations is continuing. In Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. The website to sow is thomasmanton.com. See you there in Jesus' name. And I'm praying for you. Love you much.